welcome to my Epoch tutorial series. For this video, I will be showing you how to install a custom debug monitor. This is the thing in the top right of the screen that displays player stats. This video uses an updated version compared to my old video. The main change is that this one is more modular, supports SnapBuild Pro, and is just a cleaner install. I will go over how to uninstall the old version as we go. Now this monitor can be turned on and off by players by pressing the insert key on the keyboard. So if this is something you want, you can continue with the install. There will be a link in the description that will take you to this GitHub repository to download the files. You can download the files right over here at the top right, and then move them over to your desktop. You can then extract the files and open them. Go into the custom debug monitor subfolder here until you see the custom. Now you would need to open up your server files. In here you need to go to your MP missions folder and find whichever mission you are using. My mission file will be on the left and the downloaded files will be on the right here. All you need to do is copy over this custom folder into your mission file here. It should not ask you to overwrite anything. You can then close the downloaded files and open up the init SQL. Come back to the GitHub page here and scroll down to the install section. The install section is right here and then you need to find number 6. At number 6, you need to copy the second line, and we're going to look for this first line here. It will be down here where there are a bunch of call compile sections. This whole block will have the line we are looking for above it. If you can't find it, you can always press Ctrl F and search for it that way. You need to paste in that line right above it. So the line we just added in, for this, it is defaultly set to true. This means that when you log in to the server, it will show the debug monitor at the top right. If you turn this to false, it will be off by default when you log in, so you will not see it at the top right. I personally like it to be there when someone logs in, so I leave it as true. If anyone wants to turn it off, they can press the insert key. Now we need to come down to number 7. Again, copy the second line, and we're going to look for this progress loading screen 1.0. That is at the bottom of this call compile section that we were just looking at. It's right here. Again, if you can't find it, you can easily use Control F and search for it. You need to move the progress loading screen line down once and paste in the code we copied directly above it. After that, you can come over to number 8 on the GitHub and copy that line, the first one. We are then looking for the if not is dedicated code block. That is usually directly below the compile section here. You'll see an if is server, and then underneath that you'll see an if not is dedicated. So this is the one that we need to find right here. At the bottom of it, if you previously had the debug monitor installed before 2016, you will see this code there. You can remove it. At the very bottom of the not is dedicated code block here, we need to paste in the code we copied. This needs to go before this bracket. You can see that there's code above it and a bracket below it. It must be that way. You can now save the file, and that's everything we need to do to install it. Now there are a few things you have to do for configuring it. To configure the tool, you can go into the custom folder and open up the debug monitor. In here, you need to open up the debug monitor.sqf file. In here, you will see that there is a configuration section. The first one here is the server title. If you look at the GitHub page, you can see the title up top here. You can change this to whatever you want. I'm just going to say Noxus Server. 
and that will now display at the top when anyone's looking at the debug menu. The second one here is the subtitle. This can be a website or a short message or something like that. That is the subtitle right there that you can see. And let's just say that you don't want that subtitle there. For whatever reason, you either don't have a group or a website or anything you want to display. You can remove it by deleting line 40. So if we come down here to line 40, which is the second line under the hint silent here, you can delete that. Now you may want to leave this gap here because other lines are numbered. If you delete the entire line, then the numbers will be wrong. So you can see that this one's supposed to be line 50. It's actually now line 49 because we removed the spacing. So you may want to keep that space there. Now, this message won't show up at all. There will not be a subtitle here anymore. So no matter how often you change this, it just won't exist. Now, this line here is the TeamSpeak IP. You can change this to whatever you want, really. It doesn't have to be the TeamSpeak IP. It's just what most people use it for. You can actually delete the whole thing and even put in, like, let's say a Steam group. And you can give the Steam group name right here. And that will display above the server restart timer. It doesn't show in the picture here, but it will display directly above this and it will be about the same size, hand centered. This last one here is the restart timer. It is currently set to have restarts every three hours, which is 180 minutes. This does not restart the server. It is just a timer that shows players when the server is going to restart. This is a countdown. The server restart timer is shown right here, and it is a countdown. It will go from currently the three hours down to zero and when it reaches zero it will just stay at zero but let's say that we want to change this from three hours to two it's in minutes so 60 times 2 is 120 so it will now restart every two hours or the timer will count down for a two hour restart there are a few comments that give you options for other things such as this one here if you want it to count up instead of count down, you can copy this here, the last section starting at the underscore, and then replace the time section with what you just copied. Now this will count up instead of down. Some people prefer it to count up. I personally like it to count down to the restart. It will still say server restart in if it's counting up. So if you want to change that, you can just search for server restart. So control F, server restart, and we'll look for it. And you can see that I found it down here. You may find it in the comment there, but you're looking for a code line, which is right here inside the hint silent. So if you don't want it to say restart, let's say since we changed it to count up, Let's change to say server uptime. Now it is very important that you do not delete this part of it here. You need to leave the percent eleven colon percent twelve. That's where the numbers come from. Next we have a little more configuration. This is a little more advanced stuff that's not necessary, but some people may want to be able to do this. Let's say you want to change the color of the title. You can go to this link here. You can either copy and paste it into your browser, or if you're using Notepad++, you can double click it and it will open up. Let's say that we want that title to be orange. It shows you what the color looks like. You can choose any and it will change down here. But let's say that we want this orange color. You'll come down here underneath the big orange block or whatever color block you chose and you'll find a pound sign with numbers. Copy that and then come back over to your code. This first one here is the title. These lines are in order so it's the title, the subtitle that we deleted. This is a spacer between the subtitle and what shows up under it. 
And again, we are looking to change the title color with what we copied. You need to find the color section on the first line and overwrite it. Now you need to keep these single quotes here. The only thing you're changing is what's inside the quotes. So you'll still have the color equals open single quote, paste in the color that you copied from the website, and the close single quote. This works for any of the lines except spacers don't really change colors at all. So you can even make it rainbow colored if you want for each item a different color. If you want to delete any lines, you can easily just remove them. So let's say we want to remove bandit kills and murders. You can just delete them and everything will work. The only thing you cannot delete like that is the last line here that starts with the T over here. And that is because you need a double quote and comma at the end. You can see them here. So if we want to remove the server time at the bottom that shows right here, if we just don't want it there at all, you can delete that last line and on the line above it, put in a double quote and a comma. Now this line here with the percent 10 is going to be the TeamSpeak IP line. If we want to get rid of that, we can again delete that. And as always, we need the closing double quote and comma. So now the only thing that will display on this is the title. We've removed the subtitle, so that won't show up anymore. All of the stuff right here, and that's it. It won't show anything underneath it. Those are the major changes that you should do. If you don't know anything about coding, or if you don't believe you can do these changes without messing something up, only modify these variables. Now, if you've previously had the custom debug monitor installed, you may want to continue watching. If you did not, then this is the end of the video for you. What I'm going to do is show you how to remove some of the old files from the custom debug monitor. So make sure you save your debug monitor and go back to your server files. Go all the way back to the MP missions folder here. Open up the custom folder and delete your debug monitor and daisy space interrupt. Those files are no longer necessary. Now, there is one extra change that you can make, but this is very particular change. If you look at the GitHub under the uninstall old version, there is something that you can do to remove one extra file. Now, this is a very volatile change. This compiles.sqf file here you see is the one that we are going to consider removing. The first thing you need to know is you have to be very careful about this. You need to ask yourself, have you ever modified this file? Have you changed anything inside of it at all? One way to check is to open it up and go all the way to the bottom. If yours doesn't have this at the bottom, then you probably modified it. If you are unsure whether or not you modify this file, do not do this. Just stop watching now. If you are completely sure that you did not modify this file, you can delete it. And after that deletion, you need to go back to the init SQF. You need to go to number two here and copy this line, the second line. We're going to go back to this call compile code block that we've made some modifications to. We are now looking for this line here. It's the call compile preprocess file line numbers with custom slash compiles.sqf in the quotes. Now this should be somewhere in the middle. If it's at the end, do not do anything. That means that you've probably got file modifications and you should not touch it. So it should be roughly in the middle, most likely between 0.4 and 0.5 of the progress loading screen bar. And then you can paste in the new compiles.sqf. If it does not have custom slash compiles.sqf, do not modify the line. Because I know I did not previously modify that file, I can delete it and replace the line like I said. 
and then that leaves no trace of the old debug monitor that was installed before 2016. That is everything I have to show you guys in this video. So thank you guys for watching. Just let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll answer them as best I can.